Hey everybody and welcome back to Black Flag Athletics YouTube channel. I'm Tom Reedy, head coach and owner of Black Flag Athletics. Recently I've gotten quite a few questions about program design, most specifically how to build strength within a program design. So what I've decided to do is go back to my teaching days and take us through at least what I do in terms of creating a strength bias program design for competitive CrossFit athletes. This is kind of the first lesson. There'll be multiple lessons here as we go through how we sequentially put together a program design for athletes who are looking to build strength within a larger competitive CrossFit model or functional fitness uh, model. The, the people that have been doing this for some time who want to be much more competitive uh, on these things and have the time and are willing to do it. So the first thing is we've made the decision that we want to do a strength bias program. Strength bias program means that the focus is going to be on building strength. Our ultimate goal is to make sure that we have maintenance of cardiovascular fitness, muscular fitness, um, those types of things. What we want to increase while maintaining that, which means we still have to do some of those uh, CrossFit or those ESD, energy system development type pieces, in order to maintain it. We're, and we'll talk about how to integrate that within the system as we get it further into our programs. But with this right here, our focus is going to be on building strength and how can we make that a priority within our training. Now understand, once again, this is for more of a competitive athlete, somebody who's been doing this for some time, who's got a, a greater training age, or has got some time training underneath their belt. So the first step is, what do we want to do? How do we want to accomplish? What system do we want to use? What methods do we want to use? We are in a day and age where there's so much information out there that you could virtually choose, get online and choose from any program that you want to try to use in order to build strength, right? Um, and you can find all the information that you need right there and it'll take you step by step how to put through this program. What we've done, uh, or what have I tried to do, is take some of the better programs out of there, some that have some better science behind them, some that have some more research behind them, and integrate them into a method that's specific to what we do here at Black Flag Athletics. So no, no stones unturned. We're utilizing max effort, so you get your heavy lifting in. We utilize dynamic effort, so we're moving lighter weights at bigger speeds or doing a lot of Olympic work with that. And then we're doing some isometric work uh, eccentric work and consists of some tempo work in terms of triphasic development, right? And we're developing over time. One of the biggest things that we see with strength athletes is they don't take the time, right? They'll stick with something for a week, two weeks, three weeks. They're not seeing the progress they made or they want to make, so then they change something up, right? The greatest program in the world is the one that you're not doing. I'll say that again. And I've been working with athletes for 20 years. And athletes come to me after a short amount of time, they want to change their program. The best thing you can do is stay consistent with what you're doing so you can get a real measure of whether or not we're making progress. So I will tell them, the best program in the world is the one you're not doing. Stay consistent, stay the course, and good things will happen. So the first thing we do, we are big, ever, uh, big fans of, of the West Side Method. Um, not necessarily the West Side method, but actually conjugate sequencing that was taken from the, West, the Russians and then developed uh, into the West Side method. So what you'll see a lot of West Side similarities to what we do here. We like it because it's easy, it's simple, it's straightforward, and it gets us under heavy load um, about every 10 days, about every 10 days. So we'll do max effort work. This max effort work will be at 90 plus percent. These are traditional barbell movements, deadlift, squats, squat variations, bench variations, deadlift variations, okay? We'll do any of those types of things. We'll also do Olympic positional work with pauses, holds, those types of things at 90 plus percent, uh, as well as some pulling uh, with the Olympic works. So we do the max effort stuff. With the max effort, we will break it into a lower and upper okay so we'll do some lower uh work and then we'll do some upper work too upper work we'll do both a push and pull uh whether it's um bench press is complemented with with heavy pull-ups or something along those variations we'll then complement that with dynamic effort the dynamic effort is not necessarily how you see it in terms of west side because as functional fitness athletes we have to be able to lift Olympic, uh, lift Olympically. We have to do the Olympic weightlifting movements well and we have to be good at them, right? If your goal is to be a high level CrossFit athlete, it is going to be very difficult to get there with low level lifts. 
So we have to work diligently at becoming better lifts. So we use these dynamic effort days as an opportunity to develop our Olympic lifts. So So a lot of Olympic lifts there. What we'll generally do is complement an Olympic lift with a traditional lift. Right? That traditional lift will complement the max effort work that we did uh, earlier in the week. So people will ask, how do you get percentages? Where do you know you want to work at in terms of the Olympic lift? Real simple. A.S. Prelipin was a Russian researcher and sports scientist. He took the training logs of literally thousands of Russian athletes and put together a chart. It's called Prelopin's Chart or Prelopin's Table. And what he designed, you want to look them up online, Prelopin. And what he designed here was optimal rep ranges. At percentages, right? So he took the optimal rep ranges at each percentage. For example, if you were going to work at 80%, the optimal rep range is 18 repetitions. So we want to try and get 18 reps at 80%, if that makes sense for you. And you can do that with any variation of lifts. And this actually makes sense, even if you are doing traditional West Side um, or something along those lines. The third thing that we do was developed by strength coach Cal Dietz. It's the triphasic method, right? So the triphasic method is understanding that each time you do a movement, the muscle goes through three phases of contraction, right? The eccentric, or when the muscle stretches, the isometric is when the muscle stops and sits balanced, right? And then the concentric is when the muscle contracts. So what we can do is break that out even further and we'll just work, and you see this all the time, they call it tempo or eccentric loaded training. So what we can do is break that out and we'll spend two weeks focusing on eccentric, we'll spend two weeks focusing on iso or pauses, and then we'll spend another two weeks working on the concentric, right? Mainly what happens here is you have what's called the amortization phase of a muscle contraction, right? You pause when that muscle stops for that split second in order to change the direction we need to move, exert force in a different direction, we, or in order to accelerate, right? Because we spend a lot of time decelerating, then we need to accelerate. That's that concentric phase. So we hit the bottom. How fast can we get back out of there? At the end, generally, this is run off a six-week template. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. At the end, we'll go back to full loading, and the idea is that you should be much stronger at the end of it. So what we can do is combine these three, act, uh, these three aspects of training or of our strength development into a program that makes sense that allows for ample recovery. That's the next issue that we're going to deal with is how do we design this in a model that allows us to recover right along with doing our energy system work, our restorative work, and so on and so forth. Our next lesson we're going to talk about how I design these programs to allow us to get all this work in within a time frame that allows us to maximize development. So stay tuned. Bam on three. One, two, three. Yeah.